U City, and you might wonder, like, what sermon planning looks like at U City. U City is a part of a family of churches. And so we receive kind of like a group schedule that we kind of like pray over. And this time for the summer, we're going through James and we're sitting in a holy circle, you know, having the list, seeing the topics, praying over the things and taming the tongue comes up. And Tiffany and Terrell go, yep, Maria, you can do that one. And then they start laughing. And I go, I don't, I don't know what's funny about that. But like good friends do, they know what God is doing in your life, and they know what he has been working in you, and so I need to tell you a little bit about myself to give you context to this message, okay? Maria comes from a long line of mouths, okay, on both sides of the family. Italian on one side, Italian-Irish on the other side. Dad was in the Navy, okay? Where's the hope in this, all right, for the mouth? And so God knows me, Right? God sees our ins and our outs, our hearts. He sees all the moments. He sees the mutterings under my breath that you guys don't hear, okay? And this is me most Sunday mornings that, um, that I teach, and I'm in the chapel praying, and my papers are spread out all over the place, and I'm like, Lord, you know my mouth, okay? You created me. I know you love me. You know my heart. God knows my heart. But I say, Lord, please, I just pray that my words are yours. I pray that no cusses of any kind, big or small, will slip out of my mouth while I am up on stage giving your word, Pastor Terrell would literally kill me, okay? This is Maria's prayer process. And so I wrestled. I'm like, God, why, why do I, there's so many other options of people that can get up here and do this with you. Um, pick somebody else, please. And so God was like, no, Maria, this one's yours. And I said, okay. I said, okay, fine. And then I sit down with the passage and we're gonna dig into it for a second, but I just want to share with you in this moment what the first line says, okay? This is so, I give in, I'm like, okay, Tiffany and Terrell, okay, God, all right, I'm in this. You can throw me under a bus for a whole sermon, fine. This is the first line, ready? Not many should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. I said, okay, nope. <laughs> Sorry, I said yes before, now I'm saying no, this is a great, it's a great way to start. But we talk about a lot on stage, I feel like, in our sermons here at U City, because it really is a part of who we are, of this like talking to God process. And so I wanna give you a picture of what this looked like this time, because this verse is something that I have wrestled with for years. Because who would pick this? Who wants to pick this? Nobody wants to pick this. And so I wrestle with this, and I'm like, God, you know, and this is me, this is me over on this side, and this is God over here, just like, okay, here she goes. I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna on this topic. And God says, Maria, what kind of teachers do you love to learn from? <sighs> the kind that are merciful and truthful? Okay. What speaks to you when you like have something that you're working through where like, you know that I want you to do something and it could be a hard thing, what helps you? Compassion and wisdom. Okay, Maria, what kind of a church do you go to? What's your value there at U City, the church? Vulnerability saves. All right. Fine, God, I get the point. Not only vulnerability saves, but in our leadership here as Roots is that we go first. So I ask for you your grace and your mercy. I will share with you that this is something that has been like, this is the rub, right? Like it's, it's just hard. It feels like it's in my blood to not tame my tongue. And so I'm sharing from that place of a place of bringing that to the mat with God over and over again. So I ask for your grace and we are going to pray as we go into um, moving on through James, through the, pas through the passage of James um, where he talks about taming the tongue, but then me sharing some real like practical spiritual things that God has used in my life to work through this. So I'm gonna pray before we start so that the Lord will tame my tongue as of now. Father God, we just, we love you and I thank you for you, City. I thank you that it is a place that we can come to be ourselves with you, that that's not something that I need to be afraid of, that we need to be afraid of. Father, no matter what families we come from, no matter the churches that we've grown up in, Lord, you see us and you know us and you want us to be one in you. And so, Father, I pray for each of us today 
I get the sense that there's some of us in this room that are like, yes, I already know that my tongue needs to be tamed. And I know, Father, that there's some of us in this room that's like, nope, my tongue's just fine. And so I pray that you would grab each and every single one of us, Lord, and that you would bring us just one step further in faithfulness to you, to who you want us to be, Lord. And so we, I ask, Father, that your word washes over us in exactly the way that you have designed us and each individually in the way that only your Holy Spirit can. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay. So join me as we talk about stricter judgment. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna talk about it the whole time. Okay, but this is a verse one. Not many should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. And so I take a, a, a brief pause here, especially that I feel like the writers of the Bible would like turn over if they, when they were writing this and they were constantly talking about false teachers, all the ways now that we can have false teachers, right? Like back then it was just like, you had to physically walk to a place and physically hear a teacher. But we have the ability to be teachers. James is talking about any place that you gather people to teach them to listen to what you are saying. So this can apply to us in many ways, right? Now we have lots of people listening to us, whether it's online, in our families, in groups, wherever we are, wherever we take a posture of teaching, that there is a higher standard that God is calling us to. And so James, just right in the beginning, wants to remind us of this. But then we get to verse two, and I just gotta say, guys, I'm just very thankful for verse two, for we all stumble in many ways. And then we can take a deep breath, finally in the book of James in verse, chapter three, verse two, that we all stumble in many ways. We've talked about mercy in this series, we've talked about love, and so we know that this is, we know that before James digs in, he's telling us this is not a passage about judgment. This is a passage about growth. This is not a passage that there's something wrong with you, what's wrong with you. It's a passage about there is a greater way. And so we start off right from the bat, all of us together, giving us the grace, knowing that we all stumble in many ways. But this is really, really interesting, and it caught me um, this week as I was preparing and praying through this series, through this message. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is mature, able also to control the whole body. And I was like, huh, that's, that's a very interesting and a very poignant statement that if we struggle in life in general with self-control, with our body, with our lives, with anything, that James says is if you can start here, if you can start with controlling the tongue, then there will be not many things in your life that you can't control. And so I'm like, oh man, okay. Well, that's a good place, that is a good place to start. And he also uses this word mature which I feel like is, um, is just a very important a blessing that, and a gift that we can give to one another, not only in the church, not only in our families, but in the world, but to really be on a path towards maturity, right? And we won't probably ever fully arrive until we meet Jesus, but we want to at least be getting there. And so James, right from the start, he recognizes, hey, it's okay, we're all gonna stumble on this, but just so that you know, Controlling the mouth is a great place to start in your life to controlling the whole body. So James is helping us out very practically. Verse three, three through five. Now, and so he gives us an illustration. He wants to give us a very clear illustration as to what he is saying. Now, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we direct their whole bodies and consider ships Though very large and driven by fierce winds, they are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs, so too the tongue is a small part of the body, but it boasts great things. I'm not really sure whoever came up with the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I don't know who came up with that, but it's exactly the opposite of what is true. James is saying that, the, the, look, this tiny, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the size of something, a very small thing can have very, very great power. And the mouth is something that we use all the time, right? So it's really easy to minimize this. It's really easy, talking is, you know, we just all kind of like are spewing out things all the time, and so it's really easy to make small the power of our words. 
But James is reminding us, no, actually the power of your mouth is the most powerful thing that you have. And even though it is small, it can direct your whole entire life. And as I'm sure that many of you are sitting here today, because we're thinking about this both ways, right? We're thinking about this as the words that we give, but we're also, if we're being honest, thinking about it through the lens of the words that we receive. And so you know that there, there is a great power to steer the, your life, your relationships, your family. But hey, listen, I told you I came from a line of mouths, right? We're also steering who's coming next. The generations that we have, the generations that aren't here yet. And so we have the opportunity to understand, without a shadow of a doubt, in this passage, no room for error, there is power in our words. And it can do great things, it can make great changes. Next verse. Okay, so consider how a small fire sets ablaze a large forest, and the tongue, and the, uh, the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among our members. It stains the whole body, sets the course of life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. And I don't know, I, I just remember, I think it was in the past couple of years when God was really trying to work on me on this. I read that verse and I was like, oh, that's what's happening. I knew it felt like fire coming out of my mouth, but the Bible actually is diagnosing it right here. And I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you want to just only blame the angry people, okay? The angry, the angry words. But I want to right here, before we go even further, um, recognize that this passage doesn't anywhere here say angry words. It says the mouth has the ability to, um, to set the course on fire and is itself set on the fire by hell. So you don't have to raise your voice. It doesn't have to be angry words for you to hurt somebody with your words. There are many ways that our words can cut. Even if we're saying it soft, or even if we're saying it sarcastic, definitely, obviously, when we're yelling and raging in anger, right? But the fact that, the fact that I have the power, that I have the ability to have the power of hell coming out of my mouth causes me to take pause. And to realize, to realize what is happening and what I am capable of, and I don't want that. I don't want that. And so if you, if you are somebody ever that you have had that moment where you like this, bleh, or you're on the receiving end of that and you're like, man, that like felt, like that literally felt like, I know that I just heard it with my ears, but I am like actually feeling like physical pain of hurt. Now you know why. Now we have an explanation for why. Let's read on. Every kind of animal, bird, reptile, and fish is tamed and has been tamed by humankind, but no one can tame the tongue. Is it, a re it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. You can keep going. With the tongue we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in God's likeness. Blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives? My brothers and sisters, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water. And so I say to us this morning, to me, to you, as a church family, my brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. We want to be a fresh spring that when we speak, we speak with the power of life. And when we speak, we speak with the power of love. And James is being generous. He's telling us flat out, you won't ever be able to do this perfectly. We are not on a path, we are not on a journey here at U-City to become perfect people. You can read out through the whole entire scripture from cover to cover, and you will not show me a perfect person that God used. What you will see is a willing person that God wants to use. 
and one whose heart loves him and whose heart wants to love others. And so we just, my prayer this morning is that we can just move the needle a little wherever you are in this journey. Maybe you're somebody, um, you're somebody and you're like, uh, I really, I just, I feel like my tongue's fine. I feel like my tongue's fine. Well, what I would ask for you that this morning is you dig a few layers underneath of that, maybe a three layers deep to really ask yourself, where is one step I could take towards, be, towards using my mouth to only speak words of love to the best of my ability? Some of you are like me and you're like, I just know. Like, I already know right now my mouth is a thing. If you were gonna set my family up here and line them up and interview them, they would all tell you that my mouth is a thing that causes pain and then it causes hurt. And so I am here with grace and solidarity to tell you that you are not alone, but let's together, let's try. Let's try. Because part of the reason why um, Tiffany and Terrell knew that this is something that God has been working at me because there's been a couple like weeks, months, where I wrote every single day at the top of my journal, my prayer journal, about my mouth. So I'm in this with you. And what I wanted to do this morning um, is take this passage of scripture, but then also give you some specific steps that we're gonna practice right here together, okay, of really um, diagnosing inside and also just figuring out how we can move the needle. So we're moving on to the part of the sermon where we read through God's word, and I'm gonna still put Bible verses up there, but I want you to know that what I'm sharing with you is just something that me and the Holy Spirit in my like secret places has figured out how to make the attempt to go on the journey of taming the tongue, okay? So, you will have to talk to each other at the, until the end, but you will have to talk to each other just one time. It's gonna be okay, I promise you will all survive. Um, but for now, for these next couple of things, I just want you to take a minute and pretend like it's just you and the Lord. There's nobody else here sitting next to you. You don't have to look at, and don't, so don't give each other judge eyes, okay? Husband and wives, family members, don't look at me, Dad. I don't want to hear it. Don't give me the judge eyes, okay? And no one else is there. It's just you and God, okay? So, step one, to try. Identify your personal weak spot. What makes your mouth unleash? What is it for you? Uh, there's a passage, there's a verse in Matthew that says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Okay, so take a minute. I'm going to give you a minute because I'm going to share with you mine. All right? So as I'm sharing with you mine, take a second, because if your initial answer is when I'm angry, that's not the answer. There's a go, go deeper than that because something is making you angry. Okay? And so I will tell you what mine is that I have figured out uh, is mine is when I am being ignored or misunderstood. And a lot of times those can be partnered together. So if I am going through a series of time where I am feeling ignored or misunderstood, I know that if I don't do something about it that the mouth is going to unleash. And the very honest, most easy example of that is with my children, right? I have four wonderful kids at home and so we do this thing during the year um, called school. And uh, school is early, in case you didn't know. It involves lots of things in the morning. And so we were in a series of life where the mornings were just, <laughs> they were just so stressful. Nobody was moving. Socks are never there. Where's the lunches? I don't know. Just nothing goes right. And so I said, okay, guys, we are leaving calm, very calm and patient mom. We are going to leave at 6.50. We are going to leave this house at 6.50. I said it like three times the night before. 6.50. And guess what, guys? If you're not ready, it's okay. I'm just going to leave you at home. And I'm going to drive away. And, you know, we'll just message your teacher, but I'm just letting you know we're going to be calm. And we're just going to get in the car at 6.50. Okay? Oh, what a nice mom. So patient, kind. So... Back to the um, ignored situation. So it's the next morning, and it's 6.50, 6.51, And I was patient all the way up to like 7.02. And then just gradually, gradually, when the words, when my patient words aren't working, like how many times do I have to nicely tell you that these are the things that we're doing? 
right? And I'm using the example of kids, but you know what I mean, because we do this on our friends and our family, like, I am telling you the things very calmly and nicely. No one's listening to me. So at 7.02, the power of hell gets unleashed in my car. And it starts with my mouth. And this verse was very poignantly lived out in me because it starts with my mouth. And you know what, guys? I honestly can't even remember what I was saying. It was just a lot of things. <laughs> it was just a lot of angry things. And then I'm yelling, I told you we were going to, and you guys never listen. And then 704, down the road, my son Sammy, I forgot my backpack. <laughs> And then the whole rest of the body lost control. And it was like, Arr! and it was for real, guys. My, my tires really made that noise. Faith, I think she's crying at this point. I don't know. I literally, this is me with Sammy out of the car. <clears throat> I open the door, kicked him out of the car. He's standing in the driveway crying. I throw his water bottle out of the window, out of the window. <clears throat> and then I accidentally drove over it when I backed out of the driveway, leaving him um, crying in my driveway with a cracked new water bottle, by the way, um, and a very upset pack of children, and all of this because I was ignored for a very long time. Now, this is like a funny mothering example, but if you're sitting in this room and you're close to me, you also know that it comes in some not so also funny kind of ways. So mine is, this has given you enough time <laughs> to figure out what yours is, but mine is being ignored or misunderstood, often in combination together. Now. I asked my daughter Faith if I could use her as an example, and she said yes. Because Faith doesn't come from a long line of mouths. Faith comes from a long line of angels. She is inherited directly from angels. She is directly from heaven, plopped down. She is sweet. She is kind. She is quiet. And so the tongue is not, she, I mean, it, it's, it, she's fine. But when Faith gets overwhelmed, her mouth can unleash. And so I gave faith, because if, if, if faith has one, you have one, okay? It is, it is the most sweetest example. So hopefully I gave you enough time. Does everybody have theirs in your head? Can you think of it? Okay. I have 12, so I just gave you my top two. So you can pick what yours are, okay? But we're going to roll back around that to, to this later. So what's on the underneath? What happens? What can you feel happening when, you're, when your mouth is going to unleash? What brings you there? Because then we come to step two. Communicate to the people closest to you what yours are. <clears throat> it's part of the journey. And it's not to make an excuse. Okay, it's not to give an excuse for your behavior. Okay, it's to just honestly tell the people around who you love and you want to love, hey, I was talking to God today at church. We were doing this thing called talking about controlling the tongue. And I want you to know that this is what I kind of identified inside of myself, what brings me to that place. I want you to know because I would love for you to help me journey there to get better about it. Maybe you can help me identify when I'm there even before I know. And so communicate it. Do the brave thing and communicate it to one another so that you can help, so that you can help each other. And then if, maybe if you go first, maybe that that's something that they would want to do too. So communicate it. Number three, pause and pray first and speak second. And that is what I wrote on the top of my prayer journal. Pray first, speak second. Because we do have a moment if I can recognize the moment, I promise anyone in the world can recognize the moment of the moment, and it looks like this. Okay, deep breath. Don't say the word yet. And pray. And sometimes it can be out loud. Like, again, I'll just use the continuous, with, if it's my kids, I say, Lord, please, Jesus, please help me right now. I'm about to unleash about to happen and sometimes I'll just say it out loud to help myself but other times it's just a pause and then you see are you calmer to be able to communicate the things that you need to say in a way that will not cause damage or maybe it's just it's not a time to talk at all sometimes for me I have to wait until that level goes way all the way back down until gone to be able to communicate calmly so take that action that action step of pausing and praying first and then speaking second again because it definitely will happen again when it happens again always apologize always 
And it's not a, um, I'm sorry, but you caused this. It's not a, I'm sorry, kids, I told you 55,000 times that we were leaving and you didn't listen, but I'm sorry. No, it's not, it's not any precursors to the apology. It's that my mouth did this thing that you don't deserve and I am sorry. My mouth did this thing that you do not deserve and I am sorry, and that is it. If they want to have more reconciliation, then that's totally fine, but for us, when our mouth causes the things, we just roll back around, we just roll back around. Every single time, every time. I lined each, I, that time, I lined each of them up individually and I said, honey, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for the words that I said. Mommy should have not have acted like that every single one. Like sometimes I just do a group apology, sorry kids. But this time I lined them up each individually and apologized to them for my words and the behavior that happened. So it's, it's okay, and I think that that's something, like if you've never done that before, the first couple times are hard, um, but then you see the life and you see the healing that can happen. So always roll back around and apologize. Finally, use positive words often. Listen, we speak two languages in our home, English and sarcasm, okay? Right? So this is an issue for our, our home that like I am like fervently and like actively trying to pray for in myself because it's hard for some of us. Some of us are just so great. You're so nice all the time, talking the positive words. Other of us need to be reminded. But the rest of the Matthew, uh, the Matthew verse says this. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So if you have all that goodness stored up in you, like, I think that so many of us really think a lot of loving things and we just don't say them. Let the good things, let the positive words come out on a, on a more regular basis. At least put the, put the goal in your head to try. And it might sound awkward in the beginning. I know that it sometimes sounds awkward for me when I'm trying to be intentional about it. People are like, do you mean that? Yes, I promise I mean it. I'm just practicing positive words. But putting on positive more often to help with the mouth. Okay, so I told you earlier, this is your time. Way back in the day, old school U City, like, you know, a whole year and a half ago, we would do this every week, okay? We would come together and we would do a shared challenge. So I was praying unto the Lord and he said that today is a day that we're gonna bring back old school U City. So I wanna hear, you guys tell us after if you are happy to bring back old school U City where we talk in service or you're like, please never bring that back ever again, Maria, and then I'll say sorry, okay? But this is what we're gonna do. You identified your personal weak spot inside of you. What makes your mouth unleash? Find somebody around, share it with a person next to you. Um, share it with a person around, and especially if you are a roots leader in this room and you kind of, like, kind of eye up to see if anyone's sitting by themselves, like let's all make sure somebody has somebody to share with. Um, it, you don't have to tell your whole life story. You do not have to throw yourself totally under the bus like I did, but just share the one or two things that you identified inside of yourself and that if you feel comfortable, pray for one another. If not, just share it with